Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to make a life-size Cubone, you know, the little skull guy from Pokemon, out of thermoplastic. So I'm going to use some Warbler and some Thebra and paint it with some acrylic paint. All right, I'll get started right after this. Before I get started, I printed out several pictures of Cubone to use for reference. Now I'm just going to take some aluminum foil and roll it up into kind of an egg shape for Cubone's body. And I'm going to do this for each piece that I want to make, like so for his arms, each leg, tail, spikes, head, all that jazz. So I've got each piece made here. And basically what I did is I went my... Bleh, and basically what I did was use my reference photo and doubled it to get me pretty close to a life-size Cubone. So now for the arms, a little trick I did to make sure they're the same size is I used this fabric, fabric ruler and went around the circumference of it so they would match up. So it didn't look like you had one big bulking arm or a scrawny arm or whatever. Now that I've got all those pieces done, I need to cover them with Warbler. So I am rounding out the edges, and the reason why I do this is just because it's easier to smooth. It's not as obvious that it had this like kind of sharp corner. And then I heat up my warbler with my heat gun. So this gets very hot. You got to be really careful. And then once it's heated up, I fold it or shape it around the foil base and get that all done. Smooth out where it kind of wrinkles. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this for all the pieces. You can see here I've got everything all done. So it's a lot. And this guy's uh, he's quite an ordeal. Now I want to put the pieces together. So I need to heat up both sections. So like where they join at. So I'll go for the neck. Do it at the top of the body and the bottom of the head. And you can see here I've got almost all the pieces done. Just want to attach the arm and the spikes. Now for the spikes, I want to be really careful and make sure to get them as close to the center as I can. So I'm making a little mark and then I'm going to put both of them on there. So just heat it up, heat it up some more, get some pressure in there so it bonds with the warbler that was already there. I did the same thing for the larger spike. But so this guy's what I'm thinking, you know, done, but I'm looking at it. I'm like, those spikes look way too big. I can't really tell. You can't tell in my reference photos, but the stuff I've looked at, they're way bigger than what I want them to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull them off and I'm gonna take this smaller bottom spike and move it up to where the larger spike is. And then I will cut off the tip of the larger spike and use that for a new smaller spike. I don't know, this is probably the most times I've ever said spike in a video. So getting heating up the larger one so I can cut off the top of it there. That way I'm not spending time redoing it. I've already got it pretty much made. Just a little bit of time switching them around. And everything about Warbler you can reuse. You know, So if you have any scraps, I have these little scraps here. Same with the leftovers from the spike. I can save those and reuse them. You just heat them up. And what's great about these scraps is they work really well to heat up and put in my seam lines because all those pieces I attached had a seam line. And I don't want that. I don't want them to look like he's an action figure. So I'm going to go ahead and put some warble in there, smooth it out, and then I want to also heat it up and even out my texture on it because it was smoother in some areas and bumpier in others. Now one thing about the warble over the foil, it gets a lot of that texture from the foil. And I'm okay with that for the body, but I didn't want that for the bone and the skull that he wears. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Thebra for this. So you mentioned, you know, I mentioned in the intro I was going to use Warble and Thebra. So for the bone and the helmet, or the skull head helmet, is going to be covered with Thebra. And Thebra is nice because you can really smooth it out. But the problem with Thebra, and the reason why I don't use it for everything, is it's not as rigid and it doesn't keep its shape as well. Like it's When you heat it up, it's almost like you know trying to sculpt with gum. I mean, you really have to put it over something unless you don't heat it up as much, which I've, I've only used it a few times, so I'm not an expert on this by any means. So, but I do really like how this is, you know, smoothed out. And now I want to do, well, I want to look, make sure it looks like the right size. Now I want to do the skull. Okay, and you're looking, I'm like, Andrew, that's Warbler. You said you're going to do Thebra. Okay, but I thought of something here because I had some problems with the bone when I was making it. 
what if I did the skull out of Warbla and then covered it with Thebra? Then I could smooth it out better. So I did look at a 3D model online and that really helped with getting, you know, how different angles, you know, when you're doing a sculpture, you need to see something from all the angles because you want to make sure to try to match it up the best you can. So I'm taking my Warbla, heating it up and forming it around his head. Now, I did notice as I was getting to this point, like, I don't want this to stick to the head that's already there because I want to be able to take it off and continue to sculpt with it. So it kind of stuck here. I had to take my knife and cut it out of there. So I thought, well, why don't I take some parchment paper, put it over the head, and now put the helmet or the skull back over so I can continue to work on it. So well, that's what I'm doing is I'm shaping it out. Now that I've got the shape right, I'm going to go ahead and mark where I'm going to put his nostrils and his eye sockets. So I want to have those eye sockets marked so I can, you know, open those up and then bulk this piece up to make it look like the skull in the pictures. So I'm only showing part of this, but I am going to, you know, obviously do this on both sides. So I just cut in, cut around, and then I take a piece of Warbla heat it up and patch off that part I cut in. Now I could just heat it up and kind of smooth it, but I wanted to make sure it, you know, bonded together really well and was sturdy. Now that I have that all done, I'm going to go ahead and bulk it up with some foil and then I'll put another layer of Warbler over that. So as I'm adding the foil, you know, it's darn gravity is going to work against me and it's going to try to pull that down. So I decided I would heat up some little pieces of Warbler and use them as almost like tape and kind of stick them to the warble that's there and onto the foil to hold them in place. And then I continue to add pieces to patch it off and get it all covered. Now I need to add some of the finer details. So I need to add his little, his little fangs that come off to the side. And then it has parts that it kind of flares out on the left and right. So I'll go ahead and add those. And then his little horns, I just rolled up some strips of warble and extended those out so I'm really happy with this but it is rough like I don't want it to be this bumpy so that's why I'm gonna add my Thebra so I'm just heating up my Thebra and it's still pretty bumpy but as I keep adding to it I can smooth it out more and you can see here I'm just gonna take that in and see how like it just smooths in and it's very very easy to smooth out but the trick is or not the trick. <laughs> the thing is, it gets very hot. You got to be really careful. I do, you know, get little burns all the time. So now I want to add the cracks to it. So I just heated up the Thebra, use my needle tool to do that. I'm going to do these around the eyes. And I also did some on the other side and the back there. So I'm really happy with this. And so now I need to mark out where the eyes are going to be. So I just use my Sharpie traced inside the skull. And now I'm going to use my ball tool to mark for the eyes. And I'll do the same thing for the nostrils. And so I'm using Thebra for the eyes. And I thought, because that way it'd be a little smoother. And I'm hoping when I paint it, I could tell the difference after it has the base coat on there. And so now I'm taking some Warbla to give the eyes the shape I want. I don't want them to just be these ball eyes. I want them to have this kind of angular shape to them, like the artwork. So I'm just heating up, smoothing out my Warbla. Now for the nostril, I'm doing the same thing. So they always show it. It's just solid black, but I thought I would do a little indention for that. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I want to add some Thebra for the toes and for his one little claw on his thumb. So I'm just cutting off my Warbla and then I will add Thebra. Again, this I thought would give me a base that was a different texture than the warbler and plus I could smooth it out more so when I'm painting it I could see exactly where the warbler ends and the, the Thebra starts but well I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and finish this up so now that I've got that done I need to make his hands and the first one I'm gonna do is his right hand and that's the one that's gonna hold the bone and so I'm heating up the warbler cutting off the Warbler that's on the side there with my knife, my crafting knife, cutting all out, that all out. And then I'm going to go and cut off the foil. Because I want to have him kind of have an open hand so he can grab that bone. So I'm just cutting out the foil. Again, like I said, I can save all this stuff and reuse it for other projects. So there's no waste in here. 
And so now I've got that shaped open and I'm going to go ahead and heat up this piece of warbla to be his open hand. And I'm just getting a little more, a little hotter, smooth it in there, heat it up some more. And I'm going to smooth out the edges with a small ball tool so that way it's kind of seamless. And then I'm going to go ahead and get it shaped so it'll hold the bone. So you can see it's got a nice rounded shape, but now I need to make his thumb. So I'm just doing more of a cone shape. Then it's a little bit long, so I cut that out and I'll use the other piece for the other thumb. Heat it up, smooth it in, add the bone, perfect. And I did go ahead and make nails on it. Sculpting all done, I can start painting it. Well, almost. I'm gonna use some gesso for a surface prep. This thermal plastic isn't very porous. So it's not going to take the acrylic paint very well. So I'm starting off by covering everything with some gesso. So th the problem I ran into with this is it didn't make the Thebra as smooth as I thought it would be. So it's harder to tell now after this point what parts Thebra and parts Warbla. And obviously I know to an extent, but like with those nails, I was kind of hoping I could tell exactly where they started. But anyway, so now I'm doing a base coat. And now I'm gonna go ahead, I did a base coat of brown on the body and I'm doing a base coat of black on the skull. So getting this all covered. Now that that's done, I'm gonna use some light brown on the body. And I decided I'm gonna use a sponge to paint it because I wanted to have a little bit different texture to it. So I, I don't know, I probably have painted with a sponge before but I don't remember, but I thought it'd be fun to do this and what's nice is it has that dark brown base and then when I put the light brown over it in the areas it doesn't hit and the crevices it's you know darker and I think it gives it a really neat look. So I'm going to do the same thing with the skull but it's much smoother so I'm going to use white and I'm going to cover it with the sponge and I really like this look and I want to use it for an upcoming project but sadly I had to cover it a little more than I wanted to just to get the look of Cubone. But overall, I'm really happy with it. So now I'm gonna do his eyes. I'm just using some white acrylic on that. I'm gonna do his nails. And so I'm doing his, you know, his thumbnails and his toenails. And once those are all done, I'm gonna mix up some white with my light brown to give an even lighter brown. And I'm gonna use a sponge again to paint his belly. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to go ahead and round off my sponge so again I don't have like sharp edges, I don't have these corners. So I thought it would be easier to make that round shape and not have like a straight line on it. And it did, it worked really well. So now that that's all done, I can glue everything in piece, in place, in piece. So I'm going to glue his bone in place and then I'm going to do the same thing with the skull. Now. I did not cover this with any kind of sealant, um, so that's something that you might want to do if you make a project like this, but I'm not too worried about it. The last thing I'm doing is going to paint his eye. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to let it dry overnight. I want to be the very best, best there ever was. Who's that Pokemon? It's Cubone. Cubone, 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 Cubone. And here is the finished Cubone out of Thermoplastic. So again, he was made with Warbla and Thebra. I used acrylic paint to paint him. He took approximately 39 hours. Um, it's quite a lot, but I mean, for a project this size, I was pretty happy with it. That doesn't include cool down, or well, it does include cool down time, but not dry time. I did work on him for over several months and just kind of took breaks and went back to him when I felt like working on him. So here's a few more shots of him. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have ideas of other Pokemon you'd like me to do, please leave it in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to share it on social media. It really helps the channel grow. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. And remember, never stop creating. Bye. Wow, you stuck around to the end of the video? That is awesome. You must have really liked the video or you fell asleep. Either way, thanks. Well, since you made it this far, you might as well like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. I post new videos whenever I can get them done. Also, if you want to avoid life's responsibilities, be sure to watch one of my other videos. Bye!